What is up? What is going on, everybody? I am back with the Mariners post game show. Before I get started, I just want to apologize for the little bit of poor quality with this light thing shining down here. I have no internet right now, so I'm recording this on my phone. So if this video gets up at about two in the morning, I do apologize. I'm doing the best I can just running on data. So hopefully I can get this video up. Um, and again, I apologize for the poor quality of it. Should be back to normal tomorrow. Um, if you guys could do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that sub button on the road to 2,500 subs. So if you're just kind of someone that casually watches, um, think about hitting that sub button for me. It just helps the channel out uh, tremendously and the like button does as well. First and foremost, you're going to love this breakdown because I didn't get a chance to watch the game. Again, no internet, so I had to follow it on my phone. So I apologize if this isn't the best breakdown. Um, maybe I missed a couple things and some hard hit balls that I just, you know, didn't get a chance to see. So if I missed anything, let me know, you know, in the comments. But it is what it is. The Mariners lose 7-4 to four tonight to Tampa. Really tough loss because this team was eight outs away um, from at least ensuring a split in this road series. A tough one in Tampa. And then going into the next two games, you got to face Savali and Eflin, two of the better starters for the Rays. So definitely felt like a game that you kind of wanted to get. I've talked about it in the past, talked about it yesterday. This was a game you really, really wanted to have. Because then you can kind of, not that tomorrow and Sunday would have been gravy. You still want to win them. You want to win every game. There's only, a, you know, 21 games left. They're all valuable, right? But at least could have ensured a split. Then you get to go home for the Angels, and you can maybe take advantage there and get some Ws. Now you got to fight to get at least one more. I, you, you really got to feel like you got to try and get. Well, you got you want to try and get both these, but you really want to try and at least get one of these games, uh, final two games of the series. It'll be Luke Weaver going tomorrow. They're going to skip Brian Wu's start. Um, interesting decision. I, I get I get limiting limiting Wu's innings. Um, you know, we'll see how Luke Weaver does. Hopefully can get some outs and the Mariners' bats can really come alive. But let's focus mainly on tonight's game that was a 7-4 loss. Mariners had everything there for them. Uh, they were up 4-2 going to the bottom of the 7th, and then it just kind of unraveled for George Kirby and for the bullpen. They end up losing 7-4. Uh, they got down 2-0 in the first inning. Early on, George Kirby just didn't have the command, wasn't throwing strikes, two walks, and a hit-by-pitch in one inning. Very unkirby like but after that first inning, he really settled down. The Mariners battled back. Gino got a home run to make it 2-1. to one. Dylan Moore's double made it 2-2. Two to two. Kirby settles in. Julio goes deep for the 28th time to make it 3-2. Cal Raleigh goes deep for the 27th time. Um, so they should both end the year with 30 home runs. Cal would be the first Mariners catcher with 30 home runs in a season, a mark he should reach this year. And the Mariners are up 4-2. to two, And George Kirby had turned it on into cruise control um, through six innings and looked as good as we've seen him all year. I know there was some controversy about sending Kirby back out for the seventh. He was at 93 pitches, got a quick first out, gave up a double to Jose Siri. Uh, Siri then stole third base, and Rene Pinto, the backup catcher, hits a two-run home run. So my thoughts on everything that happened there. I, again, I didn't mind. You guys are going to think I'm just defending Scott for everything. I, I'm here, So here's my take on managers. Most important thing is the clubhouse chemistry, the development of players, keeping the guys together, keeping them playing hard, you know, for a manager. And then you got the organizational development, drafting, developing, all that stuff. You know, how much a manager has say in that stuff, you know, we don't know. But in terms of just the clubhouse, keeping them together, keeping the guys energized, and then trying to do the best you can with what you have on the field. And I think Scott's done a pretty good job of that. I do. I, I Listen, there are always things that we can criticize. Sometimes baseball doesn't have something to blame. Sometimes baseball is baseball. There's 162 games. Baseball things happen. Isaiah Campbell comes in for George Kirby after the Pinto home run. Campbell was lights out yesterday. As good as I have ever seen that man pitch. Walks a hitter on four pitches, gets an out, gives up a two-run home run to Harold Ramirez. On a pitch I actually didn't even think was that bad. It was a little inside. Ramirez turned on it. Um, you, you know, so there's no guarantee Campbell's going to get out of that. Brash and Munoz were down today. They'd each pitched three straight games. It, you know, maybe go to Topa there, fine. Then you got to manage through that eighth and the ninth inning. You know, it, it is what it is. Sometimes you need outs from certain guys and they, they've got to deliver and they just didn't tonight for the Mariners. You know, George Kirby, you hope he can get through that seven there. He was cruising. Uh, he's got the bottom of the order coming up, a backup catcher, and he gives up a two-run home run. Uh, Kirby's got to be a little better there. You know, it is what it is. I thought Kirby threw the ball really well for 
the funny thing is, through for five innings of this game, or two, three, four, five, six, yeah, five innings, you know, Kirby was fantastic, but that first and the last inning um, were just tough bookends for him, unfortunately. It seemed to have happened to Kirby a few times. Happened in Chicago. He was a strike away from getting out of that inning. And Trace Thompson hits a two-run home run. Happened in Kansas City. He was a few outs away and just gave up some hits. Ended up giving up four runs. So it's happened to Kirby a few times uh, this season at the end of the outings, or at least recently. I don't, I, I don't, not going back through and all his starts, but at least recently it's been something that's happened. So, you know, sometimes you can, you know, there is no right or wrong answer decision to make. You, you know, you can leave Kirby, you know, seven, eight times out of 10, you leave Kirby in there, he gets out of it. There's other times you put the bullpen in, they get out of it. There's times you go to the bullpen, they give up the runs, and there's times you keep Kirby in and he gives up the runs. Um, and truthfully, the, the bullpen and Kirby gave up the runs today. Um, you know, Tampa's a good team. They're going to get you. It's why you look back and go, man, it would have been nice to get the Mets in the Red Series. This series so far, not really the issue. You know, splitting two games with Tampa Bay is not the end of the world, although you felt like today was one you want to get. You'd love to get some of those games against the Mets and the Reds, but, you know, still fighting it a little bit. This has not been a great road trip. The Mariners are, what, three and, let's see, they've won th three and five, three and five on the road trip. I mean, still have a chance to salvage 500 on this road trip. I don't necessarily think that's going to happen in the next two. But, man, if you can get out of this road trip four and six, it's not ideal, but you'll take it. You'll take because then you get the Angels for three, hopefully without Otani. Um, and then the Rangers play the Blue Jays for four, so they should beat each other up a little bit. Last I checked, Texas was tied with Oakland. Houston was getting beat up by San Diego, and Toronto was beating Kansas City. So it looks like Toronto will gain a game. Honestly, I don't really care about the fifth versus the sixth wild card, to be perfectly honest. In fact, you could make a case you'd rather play the Twins than the Rays. Uh, you, you know, I'm not. The Twins lineup is really lefty heavy. That's tough. It's going to be a tough matchup for the Mariners, but you know what I mean. So. You just got to stay above that playoff line and stay within Houston. Stay within a game, half a game, game and a half going into that three-game series and see what happens when you play uh, play the Astros here. Dominic Leone came in and pitched the bottom of the eighth. Oh, it, it, you got to move on. It's time. I mean, Leone gives up the home run, gives up a triple, gives up um, just the one run total. Uh, did strike out Rene Pinto. Could have used that in the seventh inning. <laughs> but uh, gives up the run. The Mayors end up losing 7-4. to four. I don't care. I don't mind going to Leon there. If he's going to be on the roster, that's when you should use him. I mean, there's no point in bringing Brash or anybody in, you know, Topa into those situations. Down a couple runs, save those guys for tomorrow. But um, it's just not working out for Dominic Leon. He's given up a home run, I think, in every outing. Uh, part of me feels bad for him because he's not this bad. I don't think any pitcher is this bad. His ERA is like, what, with the Mariners, 9.5 or something, 8-something. I, I mean... He's walked as many as he's struck out. He's given up four home runs. It's been a disaster. Is he this bad? No, I, I don't think so. I don't think any major league pitcher is this bad. But it's just not working out. Um, there was I, I talked about this in another post game video. I think it was after the Reds game. Leon had some interesting stats. You know, if you look at Savant, he had good whiff percentage and chase rate, um, which was enough to be you know, hey, let's see what this guy's got. If you want to do that in spring training, fine. Bring him back in March. See if the, you know, Pete Woodworth and some of these guys can get their hands on him and, and make some of this work. No problem with that whatsoever. Do it. But not in September. Not in the pennant race. Can't do it. Can't do it. I, I know it probably didn't co it didn't cost the team the game tonight, but what if JP had hit a two-run double, you know, in the top of the ninth? What if he had loaded the bases or gotten Julio to the plays of tying run and Julio homers? I'm not saying you need to put all your top relievers into a game when you're down 6-4, but you've got to have relievers that can get outs and at least give you a chance into the next inning. You know, guys like Isaiah Campbell, and I know Campbell wasn't great tonight, but guys like that, guys like, um, you know, Taylor Saucedo, um, but Dominic Leone just can't do that right now. He, he just can't, and I don't really care who's up. Casey Sadler's looked better. We know how good he was a couple years ago. You know, if he's healed up, give Casey Sadler a chance. Uh, Ryder Ryan, uh, Prelander Baroa, uh, even Diego Castillo. At least we've seen Diego Castillo be successful at the big league level. He's pitched better of late in Tacoma. He's not on the 40 man, so I think that makes it tough. But I mean, somebody, you know, bring someone up. Um, but it's just not working out with Dominic Leo. Not the reason they lost tonight. Um, but yeah, just not working out. Pretty frustrating loss, I'm not going to lie. Um, you're eight outs away, like I said, from splitting the series. It, excuse me, minimum splitting the series, not, you know, 
like could, could have won the series, but they still can, but you know what I mean. Um, with, with a really good pitcher on the mound, and you know, if Kirby can get through that seven, probably Spire and Topa, some combo of that for the final six outs, you feel pretty good that you can get a win there. And, and I, I hate to say it, you can't relax in September, but at least feel like, okay, now if we can just find a way to win one of these next two, you feel pretty good. I'm still kind of in that mindset. Get one. You, you really want to get one here, especially if Texas sweeps Oakland or Toronto sweeps Kansas City. You got to be prepared for that. So um, you'd really like to find a way to get one of these games. Hopefully, maybe, you know, Luke Weaver's on tomorrow and, and they can find a way to get that win, you know, tomorrow afternoon. We'll see. Crazy things happen in baseball all the time. I, I say it every video, I'm going to say it in buckle up, guys. It's September baseball. It, it's going to be bumpy, it, it's not always going to be pretty. Mares are fighting it a little bit. I, I will say that they've at least grabbed a few wins in this stretch, which has helped it, you know, maybe this road trip go from. You know, it's been bad, but it could have been a disaster. I mean, imagine if Tampa found a way in that ninth inning. If Cal Raleigh doesn't throw out Luke Rayley in the ninth inning, I think Tampa probably scores a run in that ninth inning yesterday. You know, so if that would have happened, if Daniel Vogelbach didn't try to stretch for second base, you know, this could be a disaster of a road trip. So to their credit, they've been able to battle and get a few wins here uh, to keep themselves afloat. And the other teams aren't exactly running away with things either. Um, you know, Texas has been free falling. Toronto's actually played pretty good, but they haven't ran away with anything. And then Houston's been kind of up and down uh, a little bit so far in September as well. So, it, you know, it, it's going to happen. Uh, you know, the 21 and 6 August, they weren't going to play at that winning percentage all season. You're not going to run a whatever percentage that is for the rest of the year but what are they on this road trip three and five you're also probably not going to run that winning percentage the rest of the year they're better than that too like if you're going to stand there and go well see that was fluky that they won all those games in august then this is a little fluky too that this stretch they're going through you just got to push through it and find your rhythm i was hoping that was happening because they won two in a row eight outs away tonight would have been number three it would have been like hey you know despite everything this team's on a three-game win streak now but unfortunately um, that seventh inning happened, just unraveled a little bit. So Tampa's really good. Guys, if the playoffs started tomorrow, this would be your series um, for the postseason. So get used to Tampa Bay. You might be seeing them in just a few weeks in the playoffs. I will say this, you know, someone asked me the other day if, you know, like I, I get a lot of points, like always very optimistic, and I appreciate that. Thank you guys for saying that. That's really my goal. My goal is to be a voice of reason. Listen, if they lose nine in a row and drop out of the playoffs, I'm going to call it out. I'm not going to say, ah, oh, they're fine. I just, I'm not going to panic about a little bit of a tough road trip. That tr Truthfully, I kind of thought was going to be a tough road trip. Um, I would have been fine. I even said going in, I think five and five, six and four, you'd take. Now you definitely take five and five. It's been worse than I thought it was going to be. I thought they might win one of the series in Cincinnati or New York. Um, unfortunately, they dropped both of those, but I'm not in any type of panic mode yet. It's just been a little bit of a tough road trip. You're one good series away from kind of just, uh, you know, eliminating the bad vibes. And like I said, despite this being awful, they've won enough games in this road trip so far that they've at least um, stayed afloat here. And not more than stayed afloat. Afloat implies that they're just hanging on. They've stayed in the driver's seat for the most part. I, I wouldn't be lying if I was a little bit worried about the rotation in the bullpen. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Someone asked me about, you know, do I have any concerns being optimistic? I do. I, I'm a little bit worried about this back end of the rotation um, the rest of the way. I said it. Um, I know I've probably, I'm probably a broken record, but when you do daily recaps, it's hard sometimes not to repeat the same stuff. Um, but I was on that stream with Rooftop last week and I said, my biggest concern, Miller and Wu down the stretch. Like, how are they going to hold up? And now Brian Wu's been skipped tomorrow. His velocity has been down. Bryce Miller bowed his last start, but didn't look great. What are we going to get from those two down the stretch? Especially with them pitching back to back, I'd almost like to break that up. If there's a day off, I would try and slot Logan back in between them to give that little bit of a break there. Because um, it's just, I'm talking like they're bad. They're not. They've actually both been, done a really nice job. But you'd like to break it up a little bit because now you go into these next two games, which feel pretty pivotal. And you're relying, I mean, Wu's not even going to pitch tomorrow, but you know what I mean. You're relying on those slots in the rotation. Listen, I, that's not on, I'm not blaming the front office for that. I'm sorry, I know some people are, I'm not. You lost Robbie Ray for the year, Marco Gonzalez, Easton McGee, three pitch, Chris Flexen, essentially, who you thought was decent depth, was horrid. 
I mean, you had four guys that were above these guys that you expected to be major league quality pitchers. Um, you know, I mentioned it when it happened. The Robbie Ray injury was a really devastating injury that I don't think got talked about enough when it really happened. And it's kind of rearing its ugly head a little bit because you could have, I'm not saying Robbie would have been in Wu's slot tomorrow, but you might have Robbie going tomorrow. You'd feel much better with him on the mound. Um, than what you're going with tomorrow. So it happens. The starting pitching market was absurd to trade for one. I wasn't against them adding one, but it was really, really expensive. Um, and I'm a little bit worried about the bullpen. I think it's mostly fatigue. I, I like the arms. Like y- you go to the Savad Pages, Brash, Munoz, all these guys, fantastic. Spire's been great. Topa's been really good. I like these arms, but th- they do seem to be wearing down a little bit. You need to get some big innings out of rookies like Isaiah Campbell who just haven't been here before. And Campbell was amazing yesterday, but, you know, goes back to back and then struggles tonight. So just something I think... Now, listen, every team minus maybe Atlanta has some concerns going to the postseason. So that doesn't mean the Mariners can't overcome this. Um, everybody in the AL. I mean, Baltimore's on a roll, but they're dealing with, I, I believe, Felix is still out. That's a huge blow for them. Houston's going through it a little bit. They're still a really good team. But they're fighting it a little bit more than they have in the past. Texas has been in a free fall. Toronto's got a lot of flaws. Um, Tampa does too. They're without Wanda Franco, obviously, and then McClanahan for the rest of the year. So they're fighting some things as well. So it's not an excuse. I'm not trying to make excuse for the Mariners. Uh, but it is the things I'm worried about. But also, it doesn't make me think any less of this team. I think they're good arms, and I, and I think they can battle through it. So that's all I've got for tonight. I'm going to let you guys go. This video might be up at 2 in the morning without my internet, so we'll see. Have a great night, everybody. Remember to hit that subscribe button. Remember to like the video as well. I will see you all tomorrow for the post game. I'm going to try to get my NFL picks up at some point. I may just have to skip week one. I'll have a Seahawks and a Mariners post game recap up on Sunday. That's going to be a crazy day. Two recaps for you guys. Take care, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. Mares are still in the playoffs, so again, take deep breaths. Guys, September is going to be wild. It is. I'm just telling you. you. You can yell at me and say, no, Jay, this is ridiculous. But for your health, for, for you, I'm talking to you, you got to take deep breaths in September. It's going to be it's going to be crazy. Hope that when all the dust settles, the Mariners are in the dance. Have a great night, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.